Hey, what's happening everybody? It's great to be doing a video again. It's been a long time. Sorry I've been absent. Uh, it's The truth is, is our life just isn't as interesting as it was when we were on a school bus. <laughs> But I, as promised, I wanted to do a quick video to talk about the process of selling our schoolie. We've got a lot of questions from people asking us what it was like to try to sell it, um, what we actually sold it for, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to answer all of those questions in this video right now. Okay, so the first thing I want to say right up front is selling our bus wasn't anywhere near the experience that I thought it was going to be. <laughs> So when we first started this journey and I we discovered schoolies, one of the ways that we discovered schoolies was I had a friend in Texas, in Austin, Texas, that was selling her schoolie. Her and her family had traveled around in it for two years and then they were selling it. And uh, we almost bought it. That's We were really, really close to buying it. Um, but then it got snagged and we didn't have the money in time and that kind of stuff. And so that's when we decided to build. Now, watching her selling experience uh, gave me a lot of false confidence in uh, the ability to sell a schoolie. <laughs> uh, she must just be a really good salesperson or something. I don't know what they were able to do, but I know that they uh, their schoolie didn't have near as many upgrades as ours, um, like specifically uh, solar and refrigerator, all that kind of stuff. They sold it for $37,000. And so when we first started looking at this and I knew the schoolie was gonna cost us about 20,000 to build, I thought, hey, if it doesn't work out, no problem, we'll sell it. We'll make some money on our labor, somebody else will have a really nice schoolie and we'll go on our way. Uh, no, no, it doesn't, didn't really work out that way. <laughs> so like I said, this is just my experience. Um, this could be totally different for somebody else. Somebody else might be a better salesperson than I am or know the loopholes or the crowds or the people to get, to get it in front of. But us, it was a struggle. And I'm gonna talk about some of those struggles so that maybe if you end up selling a schoolie or looking to buy a schoolie, you can help alleviate some of these, some of these heartaches. So first, it took way longer than I thought it was gonna take. Honestly, when we put it up for sale in September, I'm now doing this video in December, so three months. When we put it up for sale, I thought, I mean, we were making plans to be out of it within a week or two weeks. Um, I just didn't see it taking that long. We were, I'll also mention we were in the Seattle area at the time, and I just thought that would be just a prime location to get the thing sold locally so that somebody could look at it all of that kind of stuff. I'm gonna talk about uh, distance and proximity in, in a minute. Um, but it just, it took three months, much, much longer than I thought it was gonna take. In September, we started our pricing at $45,000. So I, uh, just being completely honest, and I think I even said this in the video when I told you, said we were selling it, I didn't think we were gonna get 45. I just needed a place to start to start a conversation, to see what people thought of the price and what they were willing to do. It also left us a lot of room for negotiation so that, uh, so that we could move, uh, you know, if we priced ourselves too low, there's no negotiation or people still want to negotiate, so you have to go even lower than that, than what you originally set for. So we started at 45. Our last advertised price was $20,000 we ended up accepting an offer for $17,000. Yes, my friends, we lost $3,000 on the build of the schoolie. Not near what I thought would happen with it financially. But here's the main thing. We were ready to move on with our lives. We didn't want to have to pay to store the schoolie. And uh, the season wasn't probably wasn't the best, especially here now that we're back here in Utah. So that's why we accepted the offer. We were ready to be done with it, unfortunately, and uh, took a wash on it. Okay, so the actual uh, selling of the bus uh, was time consuming, really time consuming. Uh, and uh, it's a, it was a lot of communication with a lot of, frankly, tire kickers. Um, we had a lot of people take us uh, you know, through communication and videos and pictures and sending all of these these things to them, they took us from inquiry of being very, very, very interested. We got an email pretty much every single day that in the subject was, 
extremely interested buyer on your schoolie and we would communicate with them and we'd give all these photos and these videos and all of that kind of stuff and then when it came down to it um you know almost to the point of the transaction we would settle on a price all that kind of stuff and come to find out they didn't have the money for it all through that process and um i can't tell you how many times that happened and it was time consuming and it was frustrating and that's one of the reasons we just kept lowering the price because I couldn't continue to invest that much time into the sale of the schoolie. If you're looking to sell or if you're looking to buy, just I would encourage you to be very upfront with each other, um, whether you are the buyer or the seller, and uh, just just say, you know, ask if they have the, the funds available before you put too much time into help walking them through the whole bus or answering questions or any of that kind of stuff. That brings me to my next point. We probably had 10 or 11 people where we settled on a price and, uh, and it was, in my opinion, looked like it was going to be a done deal. And then they tried to get financing for it. And every single one of them came back within 24 hours and said, you can't get financing for these things, which I already knew. And I started warning people right up front as they inquired. Um, if you're planning on getting financing for this thing, it's probably not going to happen unless you have resources to private money. Banks just really are not willing to lend on something like this that's homemade. And uh, to them, the value of the bus is maybe $3,000. They can't take into account all the addition and the work and blah, 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 blah. So financing just does not work. And finally, proximity. Proximity was a difficult thing for us. I decided to post it for sale in major areas of the country that I thought would see a lot of schooly action. So these were Seattle, Portland, Eugene, Austin, um, you know, just different cities like that that I felt like this would be kind of fit into the culture. Uh, also in Salt Lake, we, we listed it in Salt Lake once we were back here in Utah. And it proved that the distance thing was a deal breaker almost every single time because they obviously wanted to see the bus before they put down any money, but they don't want to go through the expense to come see it before they know that they're going to purchase it. So a lot of people asked if I would be willing to deliver it, which for the most part, if it was in the Western states, I was willing to deliver it. However, I needed a non-refundable deposit on it before I hit the road with it. And not a lot of people, understandably, not a lot of people want to do that. Plus, you have a lot of other th issues to think about, like what if the bus breaks down or gets in a wreck or gets damaged on your way to take it to these people and they no longer want it. And now you've got a wrecked bus that you wouldn't have been driving otherwise or broken down or whatever. So that's an expense to you. Um, so it's just a really complicated situation as you talk about uh, long distance purchasing. And I know people have done it and I know that it, they've made it work, um, but there's a little bit of risk that has to be assumed on either side of the transaction. We ended up selling to a local buyer. They came and checked it out, picked it up, and uh, they're off on their adventures, putting some cold weather equipment into it and, uh, and heading south. Overall, I would not want to go through this selling process again. It was painful. It was tough to uh, think about all the work that was put into it and never seeing much out of that. Other than we loved the time that we were on it and we loved the memories that we made and that's how we look at it. Yes, we lost money. Yes, we put a lot of hard work into it. But man, we had some incredible memories and what an experience it was. Anyway, I hope all of you are doing amazing out there in Schoolie Nation. Peace.